system that we're going to be constructing. This is a 3,300 litre fish tank. Um, we're going to have two gravel beds with bell siphons and a deep water bed over there. All right, and our filters there. None of it's been put together or plumbed, so we've got to make all the components. Now, the first thing that we're going to start with is focusing on our fish tank. And what we're going to do is build the solid lift outlet for this tank. You'll see the outlet of the tank is at the top of my fish tank. And in order for us to calculate all the required sizes and dimensions, we're obviously going to have to measure our tank to then work out how big our solid lift needs to be. So, let's just check the diameter of this tank. solid lift is it must go to halfway on the tank. Yeah? So that means the length of my solid lift is going to be one meter. Okay? The height of my solid lift, what's important is to actually measure the height of the outlet. So we have an understanding of how high the outlet is. So if you want to if you just measure the height of the outlet of that pipe from, from the bottom of the tank. tank. Inside, the inside, yeah. to the bottom of that outlet. About 900. Yeah, you can say it's the bottom. It's straight in there, it's about 900. Okay, cool. So then let's go back to our workstation. We've taken our two main measurements on our tank, and let's now go calculate how we're going to actually build the solid lift outlet. Okay, so here's our fish tank. The measurements that we took from here to here was 100 centimeters to the center of my tank. Correct? The height from here to here was 90, 90 centimeters. Now, when you're building your solid lift, the smallest pipe that I recommend using, if your fish tank is over a thousand liters, is going to be a 75 mil or bigger. 75 mil pipe is here. How do we know it's 75 mil? It's the inner diameter of the pipe. You'll see, the inner diameter is 75 mil. So that's when I'm talking 75 mil pipe. That's what I'm referring to. Okay, 75 mil plus. If you use a smaller pipe than that, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a lot of blockages inside and you're going to restrict the water flow. To give you an idea, the maximum flow of a 110 mil pipe is 10,000 liters an hour. Yeah? So that gives you an idea that the, the bigger the pipe, the more it's going to flow, especially for gra I'm talking gravity flow here. Okay. So, we know that this is going to be 75 mil, this is going to be 75 mil. One of the things that you're going to have is on a junction where my water is coming out, my solids are going to be moving very slowly by the time they get to this point. And that's why we increase the pipe to 110 and then back to 75 to allow it to flow through. Okay. So, how does it look? Here's an example of a solid lift that we made. Okay. That's the bottom drain pipe with the grooves. The grooves is for only half of the pipe, from the center to half. That's where we've got our grooves. The size of the groove has to be big enough to allow the fish waste to escape. Got a 90 degree bend. And over here is what we call our little trick. How do we go from 75 to 110? Quite simply, we have a 110 end cap. And we cut a hole. We heat it up. I'm going to show you how to do that now. To be able to push that through. Increases it. And then I've got my outlet here. 
to connect on to go outside of my pipe. Don't you get accumulation of waste because it's going out on that top part? Over here? No, no, up that? Like yeah. yeah no, that that's just my overflow. In case my solid lift blocks, my water can overflow into here and it will allow it to go out. So this has to be below the top of my tank, the height of my tank. Um, but also if you close it up, it will suck your, it will create a vacuum and it will actually suck your, suck it will water. create a suction and just empty your fish tank. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Okay, so what are the tools that we're going to need? <clears throat> the first tool, a little angle grinder. Like this. You must be careful. All right, this can chop a finger off, and that's where we've got our first aid box behind me here. But hopefully, no one's going to be using it today. Okay, angle grinder is great for cutting the grooves in a pipe. A hole saw. A hole saw is what we're going to be using to drill through a pipe to expand it in order to push another pipe through it. And the way that we soften pipe is using a not a hairdryer, heat gun. <laughs> okay? And obviously a hacksaw. Now, these tools and obviously a tape measure are the first things that you need to buy. It makes your life so much simpler. So you go out and you invest in good equipment because it's going to really simplify the, the journey. Okay, so let's make the bottom section of the pipe first. First of all, we'll measure we know that it's a hundred centimeters long. I also know that I'm going to have a bit of an end cap on there. Okay, that's going to bend up. So I need to measure a hundred centimeters. It's going to be over here. going to cut it with a hacksaw. Alright, that we'll hold on to. You can probably use it later. Now the next thing is, you'll notice I don't have an end cap that fits. Oh no, what am I going to do? If I don't close that off, what's going to happen? The fish are going to swim straight out. Okay. So the way that we do that is actually quite simple. is when I've heated it, I can fold it over. See how easy that is. Okay, 
Now, anyone got a bottle of water on them? Mm -hmm. Because the moment that I put a bit of water on this, it's going to set. Feel that. Okay. You can dip it into a bucket, but that's going to set. So now, what you can see is I'm slowly making my end cap. Now all I need to do is this side. The key with heating pipe is you don't want to burn the pipe. If it goes black, you're actually weakening it. And that also allows for water in to be sucked in from the end cap side. Okay. It, it will allow a little bit, but it doesn't have to be waterproof. Yeah. Okay. fish can no longer escape. Okay. So all that's done is close it up enough, close it up enough so my fish don't get out. Yeah? The next thing I'm gonna do is my grooves, my outlets. Now how do you know how big that outlet groove must be? By the size of the small fish you're putting inside. It has to be smaller than the smallest biggest or smallest fish you've got. What I love with solid lift outlets compared to bottom drains and all other alternatives is as your fish get bigger, you simply swap it out. So you start off with a smaller one, but as your fish get bigger, it might lock up too easily. You just swap it. And we'll often have multi-sized uh, outlets as my fish get bigger. Uh, and the ability of being able to take it out the tank, clean it and put it back, the simplicity of it, for me makes it the preferred method of drainage. Alright, so then what we're going to do is cut the grooves. If you cut too many grooves, you're not going to get enough of a draw to suck those solids out. Too few grooves, you're going to limit the water flow. Okay? Now, my recommendation is you go half of the outlet and the other half you don't. And also only on one side that's going to face, face the direction of my water flow. Make sense? So, again, if you don't get it right first time, you can always add more. It's very hard to remove. So you'll mark, let's just say every five centimeters, to 40, <coughs> and you can actually go to 45 because this is almost a meter. Now when you're using the angle grinder, and I know I didn't earlier, I highly recommend safety glasses. So make sure you wear these and whoever's helping you also wears them. I think you might want to stand back a bit. And that's just to stop any debris going into your eye. Just be careful with angle grinders. If it does lock on, don't panic. It's got a, a way that you turn it on and it stays grinding so you can control it better. Make sure you turn it off. Make sure it stops uh, turning before you put it down. So unless all of you look like this by the end of today, I'm not going to be happy. Okay, so you can obviously get different disc sizes. 
This is a medium disc. As you can see, I've got nice good grooves, but definitely fry and very small fingerlings will fit through that. But I normally don't design my main system for fry and fingerlings. I'm designing it for juveniles. Correct. Okay, so we've got that bottom part in. Now we need to do the up. We know that that's 90 centimeters to the outlet. This piece here is typically about 30 centimeters big or long. So I'm going to have at least 15 centimeters down. So I know that this pipe is going to be about 75 centimeters long. So I'll grab another piece. Measure that up. And you can always make it smaller if it is a bit long. And it's the same with those grooves. You can always add more grooves if you have to, but you can't remove them. So I always operate a little bit on the side of portion. goes in like that. Okay, now I need to make my extender or my expander. This 110 end cap, this 50 mil pipe has to be able to fit through it. So when I'm going to drill my hole through here, the size of your hole saw is almost half the size of the pipe that you're pushing through. And the reason for that is you have to get that lip on the inside which is going to help secure it okay so for a 75 mil pipe in order to push that through I'm actually going to look for a 50 mil hole saw okay there's a 51 mil against the flow of the water uh, so that the solids are pushed okay, in. Okay. So there we go. So how I water will flow clockwise. Right. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. I mean towards this. Yes. We'll test it later. Okay. So that's quite simply how I add my hole saw on. This little piece here is really useful for making sure I get a nice hole in the middle. Now when drilling, you might well want to just put it on a piece of pipe like that to lift it up. And that hole has to be in the middle. Like I said, that hole has to be smaller than my pipe. If that hole's too big, you're not going to get a nice seal on it. All right, can we get some water again? We need that just to set it. And just one other piece of advice is actually take it off before heating it. Otherwise, not that it bonds, but what will happen is this end cap will expand and then it will become too loose. Now, 
Now let's see, not, don't overdo it. Now my 75 mil pipe. Mm. Pushes in. Get my water. Magic. <laughs> okay. Does anyone want to know what uh, 75 to 110 mil reducer is going to cost you? Okay. Yeah, they're expensive. They're not cheap. Not cheap at all. So that's how I'm going to be able to connect this pipe onto my outlet there. What's the hair dryer called? <laughs> <laughs> hair dryer. What's the heat gun? Heat gun. It's a heat okay. gun. Okay. Yeah. Believe <laughs> me, if you use your wife's hair dryer, <laughs> you're not going to be in the good books. Alright, so there you go. That's a reducer made. Okay, very useful. The next thing we're going to do is the outlet here. Now remember the size we said was 15 centimeters. To the center so that I just want to mark where the hole's going to go through. Now how do we do it? Well exactly the same as we did for the end cap. get a turn to do this so I don't think you all out of it. Set it. Okay, so you can see hmm. I've created a, another joiner. So let's finish constructing this. My end cap. Goes on nice and snug. That. Let's go see if it fits. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, nice. that is my water's already draining out mm. from the bottom of my tank. That's a little bit of a show walking, I think. Let's just straighten that and you'll see that yeah. the actual solid lift you can twist it, it goes to the middle of my tank. As my water flows or circulates around, the solids get drawn in, get sucked in, lifts up, and from here we go to our water. Okay. As I put water in, the pressure will increase. As the pressure increases, my water is going to start to drain. This also holds my outlet in place. The one thing here, my outlet is a bit high. I'll get my saw. We'll cut that down. Uh, if you want to just grab a pack saw there, which will allow overflow when you in case it blocks. Okay. What does it Otherwise, it, sorry. What does it matter if it's higher? Because what will happen is if my solid lift blocks. Let's say I'm not cleaning it as I should, and it blocks up, and my water is coming in, my tank could overflow. So you want just to flow back into it. Okay. 
So then I know that my output is going to be a little bit lower for my water to overflow into. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you don't want this in your fish water, though. Right? Oh, the plastic, yeah, ideally not, but remember I'm going to be running it. No, no, sure, but this filtered. is just for, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to harm the fish. Mm -hmm. It will get caught up in my filters. But when I'm constructing, you're not going to be able to avoid it, okay? But that's also when I run my system, clean it out. If my system has fish, I'm definitely not just going to cut over. But it's, it's just so I know I get my heights right, and it's, I'm more happy with that. Okay. Question, question. Yes. This is 110 cap, right? It is 75. I mean this one. 110 end cap. And, and this? 110 and 75. They are the same. In diameter. I mean this is 110. Yes. And then... That, is, that is 75. End cap for 110. The end cap is 110. It's called an end, end, 110 end cap. Also, oh, there is an allowance to allow this. Yes, getting. correct. Oh, okay. It's designed to block the end of a pipe. Okay. We're just multi-purposing. Oh. Why okay. don't you go to? Uh, why don't you just keep it to seventy-five? <coughs> the reason is, is this as it expands, it helps draw the solids because the solids get to about here. Mm -hmm. As it expands, it just gives the solids a bit of a draw into this area and allows them to to drain out. We've just found it works that much better. Okay, but your solid lift costs you not even a hundred rand. You see, very easy, not so difficult. How do you get that flange? In? The flange. This is PVC pipe. You can uh -huh. see the. I've done exactly the same with a heat gun. Yeah. This is fat, flat PVC sheet. Heat gun. I've cut my hole, heated it, pushed a seventy-five pipe through, and I've got one on either side of my plastic. Then I bolt it and I glue it. A flange that cost me 20 bucks. <laughs> and this okay. can cost you like uh, 300 bucks for instance. Oh, easily. Yeah. But the issue is a lot, yeah, yeah, but when you glue it, it will waterproof it. Yeah, you just use marine yeah. silicone. The issue with a lot of tank connectors is when you twist them, it actually weakens the tank as you twist it in. So gluing it and bolting it is actually a much stronger method. And the, the surface area you use, yeah, it's much better than the ones you yes. buy that's just <coughs> that. tiny. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very easy way, but you can get through liner, plastic, anything like that. If you can't find uh, the actual PVC sheets, you get one 10 mil pipe, you heat it, and you push it flat, like what we did with the end caps. You flatten it, and then you make your flat. Okay, cool. So let's split up into teams.